Thank you, and thank you all for being here, for being engaged in making sure that Republican values continue to be carried forward here and across the state. My name is Stephen Johnson. I'm actually from further west, a little town called Asaria, which is just south of Salina. I'm on a farm there that's, I'm the fifth generation. That's where I was born and raised. Uh, was there through K-State, went to K-State, happened to be student body president there. Then I went to work in financial services, did travel around a bit. The company that I was with is now Ameriprise. Uh, they sent me back to get my MBA uh, in finance at the University of Chicago. Um, and I was then in charge of investment advice and products until 2013 with them and built the investment models that we used. Um, in 2010, I saw the issues that we had with CAPERS and the contributions that were being made never met the liability. Pretty simple math. Contributions went to two billion a year, didn't meet the liability in a state general fund that was under six billion a year. It's pretty easy to see that that just wasn't going to work. So uh, at that time, I had moved back to actually Johnson County in 2002. I moved back to the farm in 2008 after my second parent had passed away. And so in 2010, I did file to run against an incumbent Democrat. Amazing, we had a Democrat hold that seat for as long as we did out there. Uh, and did win that seat. Actually, the one, I think the first congratulatory call I got was from Terry Lewis, who called all of us to say congratulations on getting elected that year. So I appreciated that and uh, went to a, uh, went to Topeka and started on that and other issues. So that was one of the main things that I worked on. The key was changing what we were paying and changing how we were paying it so that we could bring that down. I mentioned what it was going to. We're currently paying about 700 million versus 2 billion a year, and it will grow to about 900 million under the current plan. So there's not only one fix, but it was something that saved actually billions of dollars over time and actually found a way to make sure that we met the liability, et cetera. So that was one of the pieces. Continue to work with that through this time. At the current time, also working on a Sunset Commission, which would work through the Treasurer's Office and look for those areas that we could eliminate and continue to not have as part of the government. While the legislature sets the budget, sets tax policy, sets the spending plan, I think the Treasurer is in a place where you can watch what's flowing through and give them information to be able to make some good decisions about what can be eliminated along the way. I uh, have worked with the things that the treasurer does with the previous two treasurers. I was on their 529 or Learning Quest Advisory Board since 2011 to look at those plans, how that works, how that serves the people of Kansas. One thing I'd like to look at is our expense ratio there. In other states that I have worked with on their 529 plans, I think we're high by maybe about 0.2%. I'd like to see if that could be changed lowered for the people who have those accounts and exactly where those dollars are going. I have some suspicions, but I want to make sure that the owners of those accounts are getting what they're paying for is one of the keys that is there. Um, within the CAPERS board, that is the group that makes the investment decisions. And something that has happened right now deals with the net zero investing policies. So last fall, Riley Moore, the West Virginia treasurer, have any of you seen him on, on Fox or various efforts that he's been trying to fight this issue? He's the first one that stepped up and said, when BlackRock, an investment company, had said, we're gonna divest of anything oil, gas, and coal because we are going to clean energy. By his definition of clean, clearly. And as we divest that, we see opportunities in China. So we're going to overweight China. Mm. So there's just a whole number of problems with that. First, it's just the inconsistency to say, I won't invest in energy here, so I can invest in the place that's using the most coal. Not that coal is necessarily bad, but the reason manufacturing is doing so well is you've got cheap energy. Anyway, the inconsistency of that is a problem changing that and voting the proxy shares that that company would do against our industries of oil and gas and against sensible energy policy, it's the wrong, wrong direction to go. So 
I looked into where we are investing, specifically with Capers and other areas. Capers is the one that's large enough where the equity part is meaningful. We've got three and a half billion dollars with them in equity funds that I have suggested to the board that they divest. The treasurer does sit on the board, but the current treasurer is not likely to lead in that effort, and uh, uh, that's one of the things that I want to change. But we can change it. We need it, but we have to have the members of the board that do it. Members of the board are appointed by the governor, primarily. You get four appointees. You get one from the Speaker of the House and one from the Senate President. Not enough to control it. Over four years, the current governor will have appointed a core group of people that, with the treasurer, will have control on that board. There are two reasons I did not want that to happen. I didn't know this one when I decided to run back in April, so I'll flash back to that, but this one is too critical. We're at a collision of the intersection of investing and environmental policy. Kansas needs to vote in a way that's consistent with Kansas values. So I've requested that the chair of the board, report, uh, appointed by the previous governor, look at divesting at least those equities in the March meeting. We can get that done by the March meeting. We'll get that changed before BlackRock has the chance in proxy season to be voting those shares against how we would want that handled. So that's one of the things I've really appreciated Riley Moore's leadership. I've appreciated talking with his office and staying in touch with them on what they are doing. And I think Kansas needs to join the first 15 states that got on board with Riley and continue to lead that effort to say that's not the direction we're going as a country, but we're absolutely not going that direction here in Kansas. So that's one of the policy pieces that has come up that was critical. In April, when I announced that I would run for treasurer, the existing administration had just been working on a series of refinance things that would delay payments and rebuild the mountain of debt that we've worked so hard to start to reduce. So with that same dynamic on the board, I wanted to make sure that there were people who understood what going back to those policies that the Sebelius administration had done to really build that debt and make sure we didn't repeat that mistake to hand it once again to a future generation. So. That part was particularly important in how we put all of those pieces together. It's not the only thing with the treasurer's office. The short definition is handling the cash flows and investments of the state. Uh, those two pieces of investments are key. Uh, the other related thing that I'm doing while still in the legislature is just looking at our current, uh, uh, the excess or surplus funds that we have from revenue that has come in. If we are able to direct those towards debt, we can eliminate more than 75 million in just interest payments going forward a year. When you're able to eliminate those types of dollars, uh, whether it's from the CAPERS payment itself or interest payments on debt, that allows us to bring our tax policies down consistently and long term.